All right, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. So, this is the first video that's not based around prep, so I'm definitely excited to be pushing out, you know, like a variety of content now. Things are gonna switch up on the channel. But, before we get into today's video, if you are new here, I'm gonna need you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button. While you're at it, go ahead and hit the notification bell so you don't miss an upload. Not one, not a single one. And while you're doing that for me, go ahead and hit the like button. Go ahead and hit the like button. Helps the channel grow, helps the algorithm, all that. I'm sure you've heard it before, but it helps a lot. So today, I thought I would go over the top six qualities, attributes, behaviors that it takes to compete in a men's physique competition. Let's hop right into the video. Okay, so these are in no particular order. I'd say they're all very important, but let's hop right in with number one. Adherence and detail-oriented action. All right, so you have a plan when you start a prep. You have specific macros and calories to follow. You have a specific cardio and training program. Adherence and detail-oriented action looks like eating 65 grams of oats when you have 65 grams of oats. Not 60, not 70, 65. It also looks like doing your entire cardio session, not jumping off the treadmill 30 seconds early, 15 seconds early. Leaving no reps in the tank during your training sessions. These things might seem insignificant, but definitely when you get closer and closer to your show, tiny, tiny adjustments make huge changes. So 10 grams of carbs here and there, or an extra five or 10 minutes on your cardio session will make a, a significant difference in your physique. It's definitely a smart idea just to get right into the habit of executing exactly how you're supposed to execute. All right, number two, contentment with monotony. That's kind of a hard word to say, but the sooner you realize in a prep that having a consistent sleep schedule, eating your meals around the same time windows every day, um, training around the same time every day, as soon as you can realize the importance of consistency and doing the same things around the same general time and not trying to add a bunch of variables and random things throughout your day, your prep will get so much easier. It's, it's kind of inevitable. You're gonna fall into a routine because it's just gonna be like some things are not worth expending your energy or time on when you're hungry and you're tired as shit and you're sore as hell. So yeah, contentment with doing the same things over and over for like a three, four, five month period. All right, number three, passion slash a why. I think this is huge. I can't imagine being as hungry as you are on a prep and training as hard as you do and doing all the things that take a lot of effort if I have no passion or bigger reason behind it. I've, I've come to realize that I am extremely passionate about the sport of bodybuilding. That keeps me going. I'm, I have a genuine interest. I have a genuine love for the sport. So that's a huge motivation, a huge push for me to put my all into a prep. And it's like, if you don't have that passion, it's very hard to stay committed to something like a prep if you're not passionate about it. So personally, with having a why, my why is I am not content with meteorocracy, can't say that word, meteorocracy. I'm not content with living a mediocre life. For myself, I've come to realize I need to put in extremely large amounts of effort into the things that I genuinely care about. And there's only a select few things that I genuinely care about, but it's like I need to challenge myself. I need to push to be the best version of myself that I can be. So that's kind of my bigger reason why. And committing yourself to a prep is a very good way of doing that because I'm telling you, you have to execute variables and you have to push when you don't want to push. All right, four, long view. So this one's kind of a tricky one. 
you can get caught up if you are 16 weeks out and you're thinking about peak week. I wouldn't recommend that. But for example, my carbs were really, really high the first like two or three weeks of prep. Like I was eating like 440, 450 grams of carbs. It was really, at the time, it was like, why am I eating this much food? I could barely, I could barely eat that much in a day. So I was kind of second guessing my coaches and the plan they put in place for me in my head. But what I didn't know at the time was they were trying to raise my uh, BMR and trying to get me my body used to eating more calories so I could cut on more calories and not have to be at this super dirt level low amount the last few weeks of prep. So it's like, have a have an understanding that things are in place for a reason, especially when you have a coach. All right, number five, we got stress management. This one is huge. <sighs> when you are on a prep and you are hungry and your body thinks you're starving to death, Cortisol and stress are very high. You want to limit stressors in your life as much as possible. And I know that is much easier said than done. And there are so many demographics of just people's life situations. I know having kids would be a huge stressor. Just certain life, uncontrollable life situations would be big stressors. But overall, you want to minimize your stress. And that looks like a lot of different things. But I think it really comes down to one phrase, control what you can control. The things that you can't control, do not worry about because I promise you it will end up, you will be like, ah, you gotta keep stress low or else prep's gonna get real hard. For me, one big thing I did to keep my stress low was I went on daily walks. Literally just to clear my head. I tried my best not to be on my phone too much, but like when it's a sunny day out, summertime, it's nice. It's literally just time to reflect on whatever is going on in your head. And then once I'm done with that walk, it's like, okay, I dealt with that. Now I can get back to the important shit. All right, number six, and arguably the most important, and it ties in with everything else is trust your coach. I will say that I had 100% trust in both of my coaches the pretty much the entire prep. I'm not gonna sit here and say that peak week was perfect, uh, especially like two days out. From a lack of sodium and a lack of carbs, I was extremely just like, oh, in my head. That was not a good example of me keeping stress low, but like at that point, when your macros are like, nothing it, it, gets, it gets rough um with you know managing stress but trusting your coach man like you hired think about it you hired that coach for a reason and you're probably paying a pretty penny for them trust that they have the expertise the knowledge and they should care about you as a person enough to want to see you do your best in your show and it's like that doesn't mean that it's like bad to ask questions about your protocol or anything like that but it does mean execute what is on your plan because that plan is set up for a reason ultimately that is my top six things it takes to compete in a men's physique competition i'm sure there's other things those were just the first six that came to my head um, to be the most important if you guys can think of anything else below go ahead and comment it i would love to hear uh, your guys opinions on what else you think it takes to not only compete but do well in a men's physique competition but i think i'm gonna end it here if you haven't already go ahead and hit the like button should have already hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. But if you didn't, go ahead and show some love there too. But I will see you guys in next week's video. Thank you so much for watching.